Hey everybody, it's Dr. Greg Barnes from Greenway Health Center and Greenway Chiropractic in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today I'm going to be talking about iodine deficiency and why I believe every single one of you should have your iodine levels checked, especially if you are concerned about long-term health, longevity, the health of your thyroid if you're a female, um, your breast health and avoiding breast cancer, and just flat out being at your optimal um, best. So. Why do we talk about iodine deficiency? I mean, isn't that really just a third world problem? And, you know, we hear about that all the time. It's like you see these pictures of um, children in third world countries with completely swollen thro um, throats from having a goiter, which comes from, which is a sign of long-term, very severe iodine deficiency. But really what we're finding now due to just the steady decline of iodine in our diet, especially as Americans, that iodine deficiency is becoming um, a much more serious problem um, you know, emerging within our population itself. So a couple quick facts on iodine. Every single cell in your body, every single cell in your body, all trillions and trillions and trillions of them require iodine for proper function and also for hormone absorption and hormone production. Let me repeat that again. Every single cell requires iodine. Now specifically, your thyroid is Re completely relies on iodine to make proper amount of thyroid hormones. And so most of you have heard of conditions like hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's disease and what that really means for people as far as just feeling like garbage, having their metabolism slow down, their skin getting dry, their hair getting brittle, their nails getting brittle, their energy, you know, majorly slowing down. Again, that is your thyroid for that. Now, low levels of iodine have also been linked to heart disease, obesity, breast cancer, and also fibrocystic breast disease. Um, so a lot of times people don't think of fibrosis in your breast tissue women as a disease, but really it's a warning sign that your breast tissue over time is becoming un unhealthy and therefore more prone to malfunction and disease. Another thing that iodine has also been linked in part two is uterine fibroids, excuse me, dry mouth, dry skin, um, kind of a lowered cognitive awareness or lowered even IQ, <clears throat> nodules in your muscles, scar tissue, pain, um, fibrosis, and even fibromyalgia. Another hallmark sign of iodine deficiency is going to be sinusitis or inflammation of your sinus cavities or chronic congestion. So, you know, this is different than allergies, but it's if you always have just congestion or dry sinuses or getting sinus infections all the time, um, I can almost bet my life that your iodine levels are low. Now, why have iodine levels gotten low in our society? So there's a couple main reasons. And Dr. Mercola um, from Mercola.com came out with a great article. And here are the top reasons that he came out with, and I completely agree with him. Number one is going to be bromide or bromine exposure. So if you consume or expose to bromide or bromine, which is an, a naturally occurring element, but if there's too much of that, it'll actually bind to your iodine and neutralize it. So bromine is found in you know processed foods, baked goods, plastics, soft drinks, um, medications, pesticides, and more. So when you, again, consume too much of these things, it's going to bind to your natural bioavailable iodine and neutralize it, okay? Which again is gonna lead to thyroid issues, um, uterine disease, ovarian disease as well. Um, we have had a decline in iodine rich foods. So like our iodized salt intake has gone down because it, doctors say, oh, don't eat too much iodized salt, it's gonna affect your blood pressure. Um, eggs, fish, and most importantly is really sea vegetables. So it's one of those things where you rarely see it in the Asian cultures due to the amount of kelp and seaweed and, and, and fish that they eat. Um, but it's really prevalent here in America. Of course, soil depletion. The nutrient content in our soil has dramatically declined even just compared to one or two generations ago. Um, there's less iodine in the food and the agricultural industry, industry excuse me. <clears throat> fluoridated water, so drinking city water, tap water, any water that has been treated with fluoride also will neutralize iodine in your body. And then there's something called perchlorate which is found again in processed and packaged foods, contamination um, that also neutralizes iodine. Now there's some simple ways to really test. Again, the motto is test, don't guess if you are iodine deficient. The easiest one, although not quite as accurate, is gonna be an iodine tincture test. 
And so what you'll do is you'll take your forearm, so this part of your arm right here, the underside, and you're going to make a two by two square of using liquid iodine. It's called iodine tincture. And you, you kind of spread it out on your arm there. Um, and, you know, it's going to be yellow. And what you'll do is you'll time how fast that it takes for that iodine to be absorbed or basically disappear into your skin. So if it goes very quickly, you know that you are severely deficient in iodine. If it stays there for quite some time, like several hours before, you know, you know, disappearing, then you know that um, you're not as deficient as iodine as maybe some other person might be. Now, the most accurate way to do it is called the 24-hour iodine loading test. And what, what that involves is taking a s extreme amount of iodine and then collecting your urine for the next 24 hours. And basically, so we send that to a lab and it measures the iodine content um, in your urine. So if there is a lot in your urine, well then of course not a lot of it was absorbed by your body because it wasn't needed and therefore it's going to just be you know, removed through your urine. However, there's not much in there, <clears throat> then you know your body absorbed it and it did need it and therefore you are most likely extremely deficient, again, depending on how much is left over. That is by far the most accurate. Um, that test really costs like less than $100 and so I think it's really important for really anybody watching this to do that. Now, how much should you be iodine should you be taking? You know, if you're def deficient, of course, based on how deficient you are, that's going to depend. Now, as a general rule, you know, if you have fibrocystic breast disease, if you know your thyroid function is poor, if your hair is poor, if you have uterine fibroids, <clears throat> if you have sinus congestion issues, I can pretty safely say that you could start with at least 10 milligrams of that per day, okay? 10 milligrams of iodine. Now, super important with iodine for maximal absorption is that it must be taken in the presence of another mineral, a trace mineral called selenium, in order for your body to properly absorb that, okay? Now, the kind of iodine supplementation that I recommend is gonna be something called Iodine Synergy made by Designs for Health. It does contain 10 milligrams of iodine in the form of potassium iodide, which is also really great because potassium iodine has also, iodide, excuse me, has also been shown to protect your body against the harmful effects of radiation. So things like, you know, the, the, the um, Fukushima, you know, um, radioactive disaster that happened, that's all starting to affect, you know, the entire population of America. So you can take this on a regular basis to protect against that. Uh, if you get x-rays or you're exposed through other, you know, uh, medical means, you can take potassium iodine to neutralize the effects of harmful radiation if that's something that concerns you. This also contains 40 micrograms of selenium in the form of selenomethanionine, which is really the, a natural bioavailable form of selenium, again, coming from a whole food source, which is, of course, what you're looking for. Now, one of the questions I always get asked about not just iodine, but really any um, healthy mineral or vitamin is like, why, if this stuff is so important, why has my doctor never told me about it? Why has there not been just gobs and gobs of research done by that? And really the simple answer is, is that because iodine is naturally occurring, it cannot be patented. So therefore a company cannot own iodine and therefore sell it for whatever price they want. There's going to be a certain amount of you know, market saturation due to anybody being able to produce it. And therefore there's just really not a lot of money in it. So therefore there's no incentive for a drug company to pour billions of dollars into research and then you know, market as a pharmaceutical for you to take it. So if you have more questions about iodine deficiency and if you're iodine deficient or if you would like to um, get tested for it, you can email me at, at info, that's info at drgregbarnes.com and we can send you a kit and the results um, will, you know, will be sent digitally for that and therefore I can tell you how much to take. Or if you're a local in Raleigh, North Carolina, you can come into my clinic and we can help you with that as well. So the nice thing about iodine too, one last thing is that it's super cheap. Um, you know, this bottle has 120 capsules, which is, you know, really a four month supply or more. And it really retails for under 30 bucks. So you're talking about a vital, vital mineral for less than six or seven dollars a month. You know, just a few pennies a day in order to have the proper levels and protect you against major disease. But more importantly, again, be at your optimal health. So you can visit my website at drgregbarnes.com. You can check us out on Facebook by searching Greenway Health Center and liking that for more up-to-date information. I look forward to hearing from you. Go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to answer as quickly as I can. Um, God bless you all. Have a great day.